winter stars. You will never forget corpses wrapped in flames. At dusk, you watch the congregation of crows gather in the orchard and sway on branches. In the dawn light, a rabbit moves and stops, moves and stops along the grass. And as you pull a newspaper out of a box, glance at the headlines, you feel the dew on grass as the gleam of fading stars. Yesterday, you met a body shop owner whose father was arrested, imprisoned, and tortured in Chile. Heard how men were scalded to death in boiling water. And as the angle of sunlight shifts, you feel a seasonal tilt into winter with its expanse of stars. Candles flickering down the Ganges, where you light a candle on a leaf and set it flickering downstream into darkness. Dozens of tiny flames flickering into darkness. Then you gaze at fires erupting along the shore. There are so many worlds to this world. The spark to this poem came from a chance encounter with a body shop owner here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I was having my daughter's car repaired and Ismail Mena, the owner, came in. We started a conversation about immigration. Mena's father drove up and after a brief introduction, he told me a few harrowing stories about what it was like to live under the Pinochet dictatorship in Chile. His descriptions haunted me. And as I started writing, I recalled visiting Varanasi many years earlier. My wife and daughter and I found a boatman and boat, and we went out on the Ganges River at night. We moored near a cremation got where corpses were in various stages of burning. We then drifted, lit candles on leaves, and let them float downstream into darkness. In writing, the interplay of fire and water emerged. Then, a few months after completing Winter Stars, I realized it was only a beginning. I wrote for eight more months and developed a group of loosely connected poems, which became the sweet Sprang. Finally, I hope these notes show that my writing process connects to Theodore Rethke's line, I learn by going where I have to go. Thank you.